Let me take for a moment a method that I have for building smooth connections between a detailed handle, like this one in this case, and the clay which is a result of convert clay on a solid. The important thing I want to do is, or I don't want to do, is I don't want to change the clay where it goes from the edge of the converted area to the sheet body it was trimmed from. <clears throat> I don't want that clay to change at all. So what I do is I'll select an area of this clay to build onto here to do all my smooth blends on, then I can do anything on this piece I want without affecting the edge. So let me um, just prepare a plane where I'll cut that from. So here I've uh, just created a sketch plane that's got a curve on it, and I'm going to use the Select with Profile as a way to copy that area into my handle piece so that I've got a way to be able to kind of pre-join the areas and do smooths without affecting my uh, overall piece. So I'll do a copy. So I've just copied that green area and I'll paste it into my handle piece. So I'll do a paste. And that'll join that actual part. And then what I'll do is work on that area. I'll turn off my plane, don't need that anymore. I'll say just show that piece. Show only that piece. And I can see where the two are joined together or one solid clay piece. Now I can do smooth, area smooth, different types of uh, operations on that uh, kind of composite piece as a way of being able to create um, different types of uh, uh, joins without affecting the overall voxelized area. So I'll say, let's turn smoothing up. I'll do a big smooth on that area there. I'm also going to reduce the whole thing down in resolution a little bit to let me um, do smooths at a, a much coarser level. Uh, I'm working on a very high resolution piece right here. I'm going to turn clay coarseness down just a bit. So in this case I'm turning it from 0.25 to 0.75. It'll give me a big coarse piece and I can start doing some rather major changes to the resolution of it. I'm using an area smooth here. I'll do an apply. Uh, clear that. Uh, I could do maybe another whole uh, smooth to the entire piece. And again, these are really abrupt changes, but what it will let me do is when I turn back on this other piece, I have a nice smooth blend between the two. Now I'll join these two pieces together. And to join them together, remember this is at 0.75, this is at 0.25. I want to change this one's resolution back up to a finer 0.25 before I do the join. So I'll set my clay coarseness to 0.25 and execute it. And now we've got the composite piece with the smooth join between the two, yet it still has the sharp edge where it aligns with the sheet body. And I'll combine the two pieces together now that they're, they're the same resolution. And what I have is a nice join between a very smooth organically shaped piece and another piece that accurately lines up with the original geometry it was created from. Now if I was to just join the two and try and do that same method without creating a separate piece there, maybe did lots of smoothings to this, uh, what I'll do is I'll reduce, reduce the uh, resolution of both of these, join them together and do lots of smooths, and I'll show you the gaps that can occur if you do it that way. Again, this is not the way to do it, this is just an example of what can happen if you're not careful with this piece here and how it aligns with the edge of this solid body or the sheet body. First I'll combine the handle into the converted clay area. Now that I've combined the two, I can see I've got a fairly sharp intersection between the two, so I'm going to try and smooth it out. And again, this is not the way to do it, I just want to show you that if you approach it this way, you can have trouble. Please do it the way that I just previously described. So if I want to try and smooth around here, uh, I'm working at such a high resolution that I won't be able to get a very easy blend between the two. It's going to be problematic. And so in smoothing this, I wasn't able to be able to create a very large blend. My next choice that I'd probably have to do is to reduce the resolution of the clay. But watch what happens when I do that when the whole thing's attached together. I want to make sure that I can align these two, and at lower resolution, I'll start to lose that. So watch what happens. I'm going to reduce my clay coarseness a severe amount just so it emphasizes the problem. I'll go to, say, 1.25, maybe 1.5, something severe. So now I've got it at a point where I can start doing my smoothing better. So you know, I'll go and say apply this and that's easy and maybe I'll try the whole thing and do a couple big 
honk and applies there. And look what, we're, what we've got happening. This is amplified problem, but look what we've got. In this area here where we've done these smooths, you can see that the there's a huge gap. Uh, I've smoothed right away from the edge. There's no way I'll be able to re reverse engineer a surface from that edge across this clay over that gap. So this is an example of what not to do, and it's the reason that I combine those two things together. I, I create the separate part out of the handle like I described previously as a way to be able to create uh, a composite piece to work with and then join that to the original piece.